Good afternoon, everyone. It is Tuesday, April 16th, 5 o'clock p.m. We're bringing together the fabulous Middlesex Select Board and guests. Thank you for coming. Um, and when you are talking, you just uh, will, you'll introduce yourself when you talk as a guest. Um, so the first order of business is to actually, do we have people online? Yeah, we have a couple people online as well. Um, so again, if people online want to be able to speak, you can raise your physical hand, you can raise your virtual hand, and we'll keep an eye out um, if you have questions. Uh, but just make sure that you introduce yourself if you do decide you want to talk. And thank you for coming. So we're going to approve the minutes of April 2nd, 2024, regular select board meeting, action likely, and then reviewing and approving the agenda for today, action likely. So is there any discussion about the April 2nd minutes that are right here? <laughs> and Sarah, just as an FYI, you need to take off Bridget's name and put Zara's, but I've crossed it out, so it's good enough. On the minutes, you still have at the very end the what signatures. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's all right. It, I crossed it out. Okay. Um, but just for the next one. All right. Great. Okay. Sorry, I'll correct that. Any discussion? Okay. I have anything. Okay. Is there a motion? Okay. Zara moves to approve. Is there a second? Is there a second? If Vic didn't, I will. Okay. Randy seconds. So all those in favor of approving the April 2nd minutes, say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, reviewing, amending, and approving the agenda for April 16th. Um, are there any additions to said agenda for today, Sarah? I, I sent you guys an amended agenda. Oh, yeah, we have it here this afternoon. Is that what you got? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Um, so is there a motion? to approve mm -hmm. this amended mm -hmm. agenda. Okay, Sorry. Second, and Vic seconds, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. everybody says. Alrighty, so we are now ahead of schedule and we are at approving the emergency watershed program engineering contract and authorizing to the chair to sign when available, uh, when the, the contract is available. Action likely, okay? So that is this. Item here, I, I'm the only one who has this, right? Just New England Consulting. Well, I, I read it earlier. It's just yeah. about that you can sign versus us having a whole special meeting, which I motioned that we do okay. that. <laughs> and it breaks out the cost of the $38,000 and what will be done. Um, did you want to talk, Brian? Very, very briefly. Okay, so, great. Um, you know, we- Just uh, introduce sorry, yourself. Brian Boyd from the Central Vermont. Right, thank you. Planning questions. So I'll move over to the yeah, come on over here. That's great. Table here yeah, please do. Um, yeah, so we waited as long as we could to send this out because we were hoping to get the information from the New England Consulting so we could complete our risk assessment, et cetera, et cetera. Within a minute of Lincoln hitting send on the email to provide you all with the contract, uh, we got that information from New England Consulting. So all of that background uh, check and other things have been completed. So um, I will have the, the full contract ready for you okay. tomorrow. The one other thing I wanted to know is that the contract amount changed by $7.20 because they had the last uh, federal fiscal year mileage reimbursement rate. So we moved it up to the current federal standard of 67 cents. So that increased the Project costs were still well within the, the $40,000 budget for that. Um, so I just I did want to make sure that that folks were aware of that as well. Okay, so the so the new total, is it not this 38? No, it, it, it's $38,011.20. Okay. I think before it was $38,004. Okay. So we should probably uh, make some sort of, when we're, when we're doing this, um, make a motion that we want to also include that the change of the $7.20 increase. I thought you might, so that's why. I okay, wanted. great. Yeah, thanks for letting us know that because I would not have paid any attention to that whatsoever. So thank you. And did I catch that uh, you had made not just the monetary change, but because of the background and whatnot, you have revisions to to that that you're going to push forward, or is that the document? So that you have? it's the that was sent out today is the document. It's just that section two, the engineer information. 
Um, we they will have, have completed the, the risk assessment, the single audit check. So, um, all, and all that's been done uh, at this point because we got the information from, from New England Consulting, like I said, shortly after we submitted the, the draft as a contract. So, um, that work's all been done and I'll be able to update that. Um, so we'll have the, yeah. we'll have the copy with this stuff. That's exactly. So the things that are highlighted in yellow updated. are, uh, will okay. be, um, will be updated in the initial, just okay. Okay. indicating we've gone through the same procedure that we do at uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission when we issue a contract. Okay, perfect. Um, does anyone have any questions about this contract? Alrighty. Um, is there anything else? Sorry, go ahead, sir. No. Nope. Is there anything else you want to say, Brian, about this? Okay. Um, so do we have a motion to... I I move that you are able to sign it on your own and that we accept the $7.20 increase. All righty. I'll second that. All righty. Okay. All those in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Okay. The ayes have it. So Sarah will text me or email me. And are we okay with my digital signatures? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm I'm okay with it as long as it's yeah. fine, but that's... How we typically okay as well so yep. it's easier for you to come here to sign it yep so. sounds good um okay great thank you Brian oh you bet yes. okay thanks Bye. all and we'll see you at the project some of you maybe at the project kickoff meeting whatever day that's scheduled okay don't have that that's committed to memory but okay all right thanks all thank you appreciate your efforts all right. Um, next is approving an updated local emergency management plan. We have Steve here, um, and we have the um, the plan. Is this the plan right here? The whole thing. Yeah, and Sarah made copies for you. Okay. Um, I just saw one change that needs to be made with Peter's name is still on one of the lists of being the EMD. Oh, and um, spots. Yeah, no, there's a lot of different spots. But that's okay. If you just do the signature page, I can, I can, uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll sign the signature page. All right. Um, and Steve needs to sign it too. Okay. The person in the call, we'll be right back and then just get that one page. Then. Okay, are there any um, questions about this? Are there any major changes from the last one other than people? I don't think so. No, not either. Yeah. Oh, okay, page six is where you're talking about, it, Peter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and we should also change the treasurer to yes to Cheryl. Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Um, and the animal control officer, I'll fill that in. You now. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. okay. Could you just give me those things? Yeah. And then, um, okay. So, uh, let's see. Where do I sign on this? It's on the, 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 the signature page of the second box. Where it says select board council member. Yeah. yeah. After you got who signs the um Steve does because he's got the, the top one? You've got the train, right? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. But okay. you also have to pass the motion, you have to pass this. Right. Okay. I'll make a motion to allow suit uh Liz's signature to be valid. I second. <laughs> I second. Well, no, we're we're adopting this. That's what our motion is that we're adopting the um annual uh 
local emergency management plan. I was just trying to be a little No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that I that I pre-signed it. <laughs> yes. So I'll make the motion to adopt this uh, local emergency management plan uh, and it's uh, revised form with the corrections to uh, the positions that we've already discussed for town treasurer and uh, EMD on page six. And also adding in the uh, animal control officer on page seven. And the shelter. Yeah. You say that, yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's a second. We'll second. Okay, Vic seconded it. All right, all those in favor of adopting the plan along with the few edits of contact names say aye. 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 Okay. And the ayes have it. So, Steve, I guess you sign this top one and she's going to replace the rest of the papers. All righty. Good job. Wow, we're really moving right along. Okay, so, um, no. Uh, selecting a consultant for an update of the local hazard mitigation plan, action likely. And Sarah pulled together this very nice um, scoring rubric, already scored. Um, and she sent us the um, various proposals from four different um, consultants. Two came from very far away, Alaska. Yeah. What time is the new? Uh... Have the internet, yeah. <laughs> the World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think that uh, I read through the first two and then I realized that I did not need to keep reading through these. Mm -hmm. And um, it made sense before I even saw the scoring that we would work with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission because we've worked with them before on this plan. They're the lowest bidder. And they're the lowest bidder, exactly. Yes. What did you read through? I, I read through the um the fair weather, fair weather's one. I mean I didn't read it word for word, but I read sections. And then I started going through Doberman and I was like, wait, these guys are from out of town. And then I saw Central Mont Regional Planning Commission and then this other one from Waitsfield. So, so did those not get sent out to everybody? Oh, I got them. I think you they did? did. Yeah, they were they must have missed it. It was on an email from Sarah that had, I think. The agenda potentially plus all the attachments so well, it had a lot of attachments. yeah maybe i missed them have yeah um so they basically tell you how they go through the process like what the process is with the timeline and then the the, the cost and so for sure the two vermont local ones came in um, right around the same price the other ones were higher and the two vermont ones i think understand ours area a little better, but um, so are, is there any discussion about these contracts? Sarah, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, no, I mean, I would I, I would recommend the Toronto Regional Planning Commission because they have done our they have a good relationship with them and I think they understand our town. Yeah, I, I totally concur. Any other discussion about this? Okay. All righty. So, is there a motion to choose a consultant for our updating our local hazard mitigation plan? I'll make the motion, Peter. Okay. And what is that motion? To approve the recommended consultant, which would be the Regional Planning Commission. Great. Is there a second? Oh, second. Okay, Vic is seconding it. <laughs> All ye who are in favor of Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission as the consultant for the updating, the updation, is that a word? No. Of the local hazard mitigation plan, say aye. 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 I like that. <laughs> okay. Congratulations, um, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. We look forward to working with you. Well, we're early. I know. So while, oh, where is Eric Matidier? Is he coming today? Eric will not be here tonight. Okay, would you like to give the road update while we wait for the fire department? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be great. We'd all like to get out of here bright and early, wouldn't we, folks? <laughs> okay, uh, Eric's not here tonight because uh, he is leaving town tomorrow. Oh. 
uh, as you know, or may not know, he was going to take off uh, next week. Mm -hmm. And he'll be back the 28th, but uh, he let me know this morning that uh, he was leaving tomorrow night because things had changed. Well, he let me know yesterday. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you so, feel like you have it covered? No. Okay. Is there anybody, as I said before, I probably won't be around the second week anyway. Does anybody want to take over watching the... Uh... Um, is he gone for two weeks? Well, he's gone from... Tomorrow night, got Thursday, Friday, okay. and all of next week. And you're gone next week too? Yeah. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah. Someone needs to kind of check in on the road crew. There you go. Randy and I can take turns and Zara. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I mean, did, did he put someone in charge? Like, no, he didn't. Okay. No. He did not put one of his staff people in charge. No, he didn't. Okay. He I says, have no problems checking in in the morning. So I'm okay. off all, also off. Uh, he okay. says week, but I can absolutely trek over to the town garage uh, first thing in the morning and meet with them if need be. And, and they start at six. Yep, that's perfectly wow. fine with me. Yeah. No, it's Randy, that's amazing. That is amazing for you to offer that um, on your vacation. <laughs> somebody's gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can I can check in and. Um, check back in with Liz if issues come up and I won't be available during days. Um, mm -hmm. But I think maybe between the two of us. Yeah. There we go. They work from six until when? 2.30. 2.30. Okay. Seven to 3.30 be eight hours, six to 2.30. I can't uh, wait for the math, Dick. Yeah, no, he did not. Uh, he maintained, you know, which I don't know. He did. Uh, he, uh, if they need anything, he, he he will answer his phone. Did he give them a list of things to do? Um, they're supposed to uh, haul gravel and grade. Okay. Uh, the uh, but there's a uh, couple of issues. I don't think uh, they were gonna. You know, there's a lot of brush around town. Yeah, and they were I know it's falling from the falling from the trees. They're going to do that. He rented a chipper, chipper. and uh, he, uh, but no, he was going to do it. He did it part of one day, but then uh, Ricky has a bad leg, so he can't do it. Jay did not. Jay's been out all week. He has the flu. So it's only uh, Eric. Well, and the other fellow. Okay. Uh, Belcher? Yeah. Belcher was in today and he hauls gravel. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Oh, my question is um, do we ever ask concerned citizens to chip in or does that open us up to some type of legal? And, uh, we don't ask citizens, but sometimes we'll hire like somebody to help with something, like if we need it. Like let's say all the plow people were you know, got sick with something, we would hire someone to help us plow or to take care of these trees. Like we would hire yeah, I mean you know, right? But yeah, we, don't I don't get, know. we don't get volunteers. I don't think we're gonna I don't think we have anything in the budget. I think it's uh for the trees. I think the trees will have to be done uh when they can uh with with uh, the the road crew. And probably not until uh Eric gets back. Right. Um so would you let them know that Randy's coming every morning at six? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Randy? Uh, just in response to a comment that Vic just said, you know, Charles Hall's gravel. Does that indicate that he won't clear trees or do any of that oh. type of no, no, I don't think so. I really don't know. I don't. Th I think he has a bad back. I think he does. Yeah, yeah. Just the way it came out made me. I'm sorry. My wheels spin. I didn't mean to make Who that. grades? Huh? Who's 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 uh? Eric. Most of the time, like Eric, we had a wood. We had a chipper. Like yeah. I said, yes. Uh, we we went and got it Monday, but we took it back because Ricky didn't show up today because he's bad leg. <laughs> Eric, we're doing the chipping and 
course, Jay didn't show up, so there was nobody on the grader. But we didn't have, uh, we needed a, a new cutting edge, and we didn't have it. So it finally came in, and so they sent the chipper back, and Eric went over and put the uh, put the put the blades on, and uh, he graded your world Culver and uh, Culver. I, I don't know if it, <clears throat> maybe just in front of Sarah Seidman's in that portal. Okay. Yep. Do you know if there's a list of roads that he expects to be graded, or any sort of schedule that there's in mind? No. <laughs> It's the grader's choice. The grader uh, just takes them huh? to where they want to go. What do you mean by the grader? I, I, I'm going to reach out. Any, whoever's running the grader, they, you know, I think Eric, you know, does mention. Um, like this weekend, uh, I got several calls from, uh, or this last week, the several calls about story room. Okay. And although I went over and it was dry, like Stephen said earlier. It's dry and you can get through. It's really bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Yeah. I drove my electric car through, but at a rate of about seven miles an hour yeah. or less. Would you be available to come up with a plan for these folks with me for this week? Would you be available to, sure. to help come up with a plan? I feel great. like uh, just, just a plan for the week that I can check in with these guys about okay. um, walking in the door without any kind of plan. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, to have the, the foreman leave without having any defined plan is concerning. Yeah. To well, me. He, he, he does. No, I, the, he, he did say, I mean, they're going to they're going to grade and going to hog gravel. OK, I can try to check in with him if he's available and say, see if there's like some sort of plan. I'll go over that tomorrow morning with him and I'll call you. But that'd be wonderful. What's what time when is a good time to call you? Um I don't never I never know because you have a you can call me as early as you want. Um wow. if you guys are meeting in the morning I'd be happy to meet with you. Um my first meeting of the day starts at nine and then I'm straight through till almost two o'clock. Okay. Yeah. But if if you're gonna meet up with him or have a phone call with him, I'm happy to join that. Oh, no, I, I I talk to him every morning. I just talk. To okay. So. Okay. Yes. Right. So, Mr. Coons, this affects part of the fire department too because yep. we drive on roads. But a big a big contributing factor is the amount of liquid sunshine we've been having. So if the if the roads are mucky. Grading them makes them muckier and thus harder for me to get through with the fire truck. So they've got to dry out before they can get. They're doing pretty good. Yeah, but, but we've had we've had a week of rain, and so well, and part of that part of that chipping was stopped because of the rainstorm. Right. Um, that wasn't the chipping on Monday. There was a rainstorm that wasn't supposed to happen. Happened, and that that shut down having to chip because. We'll right. And I think what Randy's saying too is that let's say it rains all next week, right? Yeah. They need to have another plan. Maybe it's cleaning their tools or changing tires or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I think that that's what we want to make sure is that they are not taking, you know, we want to make sure that they understand that we are still overseeing their operations okay. during that week. Yeah. And and like I said earlier, I'm sure, sure Eric will be in touch with them. Great. And uh, okay, so moving right along. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, well, if, what do you have any more updates for yeah. the highway department? Oh yeah. Okay. Just a little slow. Uh, that's fine. So, anyways, we uh, we have that contract with the FEMA work uh, stuff. Steve's doing with uh, uh, Dirt Tech. Yeah. And I'll have to ask Sarah that I guess Steve brought it brought the stuff down or you've got the contract or I have the uh, contract that uh, Dirt Tech is planning and signing on Thursday and I'm not going to be here on Thursday but uh, Cheryl can better okay on. they're going to sign it tomorrow they're going to sign it tomorrow okay. okay so my question is to the rest of the select board who do you want to sign it I heard Randy say the select board uh, I think it's set up for Eric to sign it. Use the check. What's that? Public check. Public check. I'll go with the contract. 
Air, or air won't be available. Yeah, Eric won't be available to sign though, right? So we'll have to. He can sign it tomorrow in, in the afternoon if that's what you want. And if he doesn't, I mean, if you want, if I do, if am I able to sign it? Is that okay? Or, yeah, I think we just need to authorize somebody to sign it, okay. right? As because a, Connie, a the person that did that works that bid the project from Dirt Tech, is is coming down, and there, and of course it has to be witnessed. Okay. Big deal. It's to $12 million. It is. Lots of work. So, yeah, when we find out, we can move on here a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, well, he's looking at notes. I'm looking at yes. notes. Uh, can we just make a motion to authorize Vic or Eric to? I think she's double checking that it doesn't happen. Like a chair. Contract. Okay. You guys just want to see how it's written. Authorized officials. So we can we can approve the title of contractors authorized. Wait, are we the contractor or no? They're the contractor. No, they're the contractor. So what are they? Where oh, we're the in the presence of the witness as to mis municipality. Yeah. Oh, it has um it has Eric's name on here. Right. That's why I asked again. Yeah. Yep. So if he if he um can sign it. He will. Okay. So let's just so keep it that way. He'll do it tomorrow afternoon. They're trying, they're trying to arrange it just at the end of the day. Okay. I guess what I might say too is what if something happens to Eric? Let's hope nothing does. But so why don't we just take precaution and all and, and, both Vic yeah, and Eric? Vic and or Eric. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, okay, so does anyone want to look at this contract? I, I don't I've seen. okay, you've you've looked at it. Okay, good. Um and you were you were satisfied with it, Vic. Yeah. Okay. So we're, the board is deciding that Eric, they can sign the contract if Eric can't in Eric's place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If he doesn't sign. Yeah. If Eric's not able to sign it. Okay. So is there, oh, well, well let's just do, let's just move that now. So I'll make that motion that okay. Victor is authorized as if Eric's not able to sign this document. I'll okay. second. Okay. All those in favor of said motion? Yeah. Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Thanks, Sarah, for getting that. So, and the other thing is, uh, speaking of these roads, if you want, does anybody here have any particular road that they think is worse than any other? Does anybody have a? I'm fairly lucky. I, right. I get to hop on the interstate and go okay. uh, for my end of the end of the travels here, so uh, I don't have much to weigh in on. And the only other question I had is going through going through the orders. Yeah, um, we have two different fuel prices for uh, for on road diesel fuel. Why is that? I have no idea. That would be an Eric question. They probably they change. It varies actually. Every time, single time they deliver something, it varies. I think I think they I think they have a I think they have a price of that day. Mm -hmm. that yeah, it's, it always varies. Okay. All right. Just like the propane. Okay. So yeah, that gets about it. Okay. So then finally we have this um driveway permit for Paul Fournier on East Hill Road access permit. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about this? Looks like it's just pretty cut very standard. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do we make a motion or I just sign it? We have to approve it. We have to, we have to make a motion to approve it. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the driveway permit or access permit for Paul Cornier? I make that motion. All right. Is there a second? Okay, Randy seconds. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Okay. Oh, aye. Yep. All righty. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, so we can go now jump back to um we're still even slightly early, but we have our fire 
department here. Is anyone else going to you from the fire department? Is anyone on? So, um, so if you, you may remember last month's calls, we had three. This month we had 12 and we had three in one day. So it varies. So we're up to 31 calls already. Um, a lot of tree calls. Um, so we had three mutual aid outs. Two were for tanker, one was for trees online. Um, total, our max number of people was nine, men was two, and that was to a tree call. But our average was four and three quarters people per call, which is pretty good. Um, engine one was out once, engine six, so I didn't change that, it was out once, and the tanker three times like that, I didn't change it. And we had uh, some POVs out. I correct that, it's indicated, uh, Sarah. Um, so, the, inter the first interesting one was on the 20th. We had a, a vehicle accident report by a, um, an automated car system. Oh. And it reported that the car was way down on Shady Rail. And the ambulance came up that way, no car. The car fitting the description was parked at Rumney with a flat tire and nobody around it and no tracks in the snow. So it had been there for a while. Um, so just a, a Word of the wise, if you have whatever automated system in your car and it reports your car is off, or it may report your car is off when it isn't even off, uh, just be cognizant of what you have in your car and where it may be telling you or telling the rescue people if it is or isn't. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a, a uh, pickup truck that caught on fire and the stuff that was in the back of it happened to be a uh, an ambulance going by that pulled off and hit a fire extinguisher and they came, they came down into the park and ride and we uh we got on scene of the park and ride and they got everything out and we checked to make sure with the thermal imaging camera that everything was out uh the suspect is that a uh, cigarette was thrown out the window and went in the back oh. But it's not an official response. That's just what was suspected. Uh, we had a false alarm at Camp Mead, always a, uh, a pucker event. It was actually in what's called a museum, what's labeled as a museum, which is where the secondhand store is and the yoga of that section that was being done. Uh, there was construction in there to set off the smoke detector. Uh, we had a vehicle in the median that canceled by VSP before any, any equipment could get out. Uh, we went to the structure fire in Berlin. You may have heard about that on the news. Payment ends, goes to dirt, and there was the farmhouse that caught on fire. Uh, there were oh. a host of people, Berlin, obviously, Montpelier, us, Moortown, um, East Montpelier, Plainfield. Uh, so everybody got a chance to go play. Um, we had Route 12. Uh, seems to be a, a, a common area for trees down in power lines. Um, 100B tree on communication line. In case you don't know, the communication lines are the bottom lines on the pole, the hot line, and then the neutral line are the top two if it's a single uh, thing. And then you have your cable and communication lines. Um, route 12, again, a different day, trees on power line. That was a report, but nothing was found. Uh, West Hill in Berlin, the structure fire. Uh, and there were a host of people at that one. Uh, Route 12, a power pole was smoking. Uh, I saw that. I was scared to go under Culver. it. So I went all the way around. Good Aren't choice. you proud of me? Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> I thought, what happens if the line just burns and drops on my car? Mm -hmm. uh, they'll snap. They'll snap to the next pole. Oh, don't even say it. I avoided it. Stay two poles away. Um, then we had a report of a car on fire on the interstate, and nothing was found. Um, probably a car overheated. And then there was another uh, car fire reported and nothing found. Hmm. We had a total of 12 fast walk calls, eight of them were medical only. We did hydro training. So if we do go to Montpelier again, people used to what we call hitting a hydrant, not with a fire truck, but those 
uh, and how to set up, put the gates on and all that kind of stuff and hook up to the truck and then feed uh, other trucks. Yeah, um, repairs, we're still having the sensor issue with the Rescue One electronic problems are notorious for not being easily resolved. So it's now up at uh, Clark's, the dealer uh, for that brand, and they're going to try to figure out what the, what the problem is. But if any of you had electronic problems with your cars, you know how hard they are to resolve. Diagnosing one can be extremely cumbersome. And we don't have any purchases right now. And I just recertified my EMT uh, national registry, so I'll go into 22 years of being an EMT. And you guys came to the emergency management meeting. We did. But that's your mind. <laughs> but you represented yourself. Okay, any questions for the fire department? Yes, Randy. On an annual basis, like maybe once or twice a year, as, as the, are the annual numbers readily available that you might be able to add to this? I get the annual number. Well, the annual number, what we're running is the top number. We're at 31 calls. Right? Yeah, but I'm, I was curious about like the average member's response on the annual. Like this is on a monthly basis is what I understand. Is that yeah, I don't, I don't do an annual monthly. They, they've been creeping up. Uh, I mean, all they've all—that's kind of the sense that I've gotten, and, and I was—that's what I was thinking about as I was looking at this. Is it seems like more and more people are responding. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been steadily increasing, um, at least over the last six months. So, yeah, like last month we had three calls, so it was really—it's hard to do an average on three calls, but, um, especially <laughs> canceled before we even got out. Um, so. But it's we are increasing with the with the average number. But can I just a point of clarification? You're asking how many uh, volunteers are responding to calls without your asking. I was asking how easily accessible the information, uh, basically without taking every one of these sheets that we have yeah. and running a hand calculation on this yeah. to say they're showing us 31. How many we're averaging is call, basically call in, no, the members. Members. I was specifically thinking about members, but okay. the question I asked was all of these things. Okay. 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 okay, any other questions for Jeff Coons? Hearing none. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Appreciate yep. you. Yes, Peter. Um, just curious where we are with the, uh, as we're getting out of winter season where we are with the uh, boiler at the fire station we've had the audit audit and that's we're we're waiting for the report from the auditor i think we i don't okay. think so that's where we're at when do we expect to get that do we have any idea no um i'm trying to remember what larry said um I don't think it's like right away is my memory. It's not like, oh, they do. I think they wait to, but I think most of them are sort of the same. It's a pretty cookie cutter um, process that they're doing with everyone. Um, I can reach out to Sam Lash and ask her, um, but my recollection from Larry was that it wasn't going to be like, oh, you'll get it in two weeks. Like they were I didn't hear piling. They, they didn't say that it was a pretty tight building. Yeah. Even with the, parents. I think they, yeah, and I think, yeah, they, and I think they understand that there's there's a lot of limitations to what can go in that building. Um, so I'll reach out to Sam Lash and ask her like when they think we're going to get um these reports because we can't do anything anyway. I mean, Murph hasn't even come out. Right. I just they, I just know I I'm, I'm trying to contract for a boiler replacement and they're telling me it's going to be next january right now oh. yeah i guess the summer season goes by really quickly is all i'm saying okay i will um email sam lash and ask her thank you otherwise
otherwise it might be Randy and I down there installing that boiler. Good. You guys are good at that. <laughs> Randy's specialty. All righty. Um, thank you, yep. Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so we're, we're definitely early for the select board goals. Is there anyone here who is visiting to talk about anything under other business? I don't want to keep you if... No? Okay. I just want to make sure. Yes. I had a question about can the orders to ask the treasurer. Okay, yeah. Would that be fitting? Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. How long are you planning on staying? You don't, Are you going to stay for the whole meeting? Let's ask her now. <laughs> You can ask her now. I yes. just wonder what the you had the credit card for the community bet. What's what what's all those charges? Um we if they're automatic payments for like our website, our email, our Zoom account, and Amazon. So we order from Amazon and yeah, Amazon, Amazon. That's what that is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you just you. wanted me to have to speak to you. I'm glad you came, Cheryl. Yeah, yeah. Thank thank you. Our yeah. No, thank I mean you. I no, I want to say that it's 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 helpful because sometimes, you know, when there's a treasurer's report, it's nice to hear from the treasurer. There's not one today. Um, but it's it's I'm nice. fine, fine, no, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be scared. We're we're a, um we're a friendly bunch. I can see that, but it's and well fun. not only are we friendly, we don't understand things. And so <laughs> it's helpful to have the treasurer be able to explain things that otherwise will be like, hey, what does this mean? Um so thank you for coming. Um and thank you for being our treasurer. Thank you. And congratulations mm -hmm. on winning. Um okay, so this is the time, so Zara, just so you know, every year <laughs> we come up with goals about things that we want to work on throughout the year. And um, and so we have it usually in the first couple of meetings and sometimes, you know, we'll put it on pause and we'll add something over the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So this is like a, a time for us to be able to um, think about some things that um, we as a board want to work on this year. Um, and I know for me, one of the big things is going to be the um, select, uh, I'm sorry, the um, the town hall renovation and uh, seeking funding to support um, a bond ask in November. So that's obviously a really big goal that is going to require a lot of work. Um, and, um, and it's going to, I think, you know, require a subcommittee in terms of helping parcel out the grant writing and the timing of the grants and the, the coordination of the funding, um, which we can also um, work with Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission on. They can kind of help us with some of that too, just like figuring out um, how best to sort of stack the funding that, that's going to be available, plus the MERP funding. Um, we do have some, we have that $4,000 grant. I think it was 4000 Do you remember, Sarah? From that original first grant, the MERP grant. And I think we set aside 500 for the energy committee to use as, you know, like for their fair and things like that. Um, and then that, that extra 3,500, you know, I thought we could use to hire someone to help us um, apply for the MERP grant. Um, we could also, you know, think about, um, there are people out there who actually for do, you know, as, as consultants help with things like figuring out how to, you know, time the applications for these various grants and um, and help with um, identifying other funding sources. They can also help with like coming up with like a um, town, like part of what I'd like to do is some local fundraising just from like businesses and in individuals so that we can, you know, have sort of sponsorships as part of the fundraising. So consultants with, can help with that and that 3,500 may be able to help with that. So anyway, that's one of my goals. Does anyone have any other goals? Excuse me. Uh, Randy? Dick? What's your- I just had a question about oh, uh -huh. that $3,500, is that out of that grant that you, that you had when we first were gonna get the uh, 28, 
thousand? No. 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 Twenty thousand. That that grant's all done actually. So that was for the town hall um, study. Study. Yeah. So we were able to draw down all the money that we applied for on that, and we had a ten percent match on that. Um, that just got finalized. Have you gotten the money yet for that? Yay! Okay. Let me tell you the reporting on that. I was going back and forth for hours with that person. Um, and, um, and no, this 3,500 is a part of, it's like a pre-grant from Merp that every town got. All you had to do is fill out a little form and you got 30, you got 4,000 okay. to help like with anything, we, like we could probably spend, we probably could have bought the window dressers with it, right? It's very broad, but it's related to um, municipal energy resilience, right? So however you want to use it for that. So like grant writing is an option for um, your local um, uh, um, climate, what, what is Larry's group called? The, the energy. Yeah, committee. the energy committee. <laughs> <laughs> like they can use it for things, that kind of stuff. Outreach, you okay. know, customer outreach, that kind of thing. So that's what that's for. And we haven't really spent it yet. So, um, all right, goals, Randy. Um, one, I think we need to finish our uh, review of the personal policies. Yeah. Um, something that we didn't didn't finish this last year, um, and I have some other stuff. But before we conclude this, I'd like to understand what was left from last year that we didn't finish for goals. Um, I just saw Sarah's shoulders go. <laughs> Why to go find? No, no, I think I, I think actually did quite a few goals. Something I've been thinking about quite a bit is um, I think this board needs to explore the idea of uh, including in next year's uh, budget cycle uh, whether or not we want to entertain hiring a grant manager on staff. <laughs> um, my feeling is that essentially, you know, this person could be a part time position. Um, and the reality is our, our existing staff are often tasked with this stuff. The first grant that we get would pay for essentially this person's uh, stipend salary, however we would envision that working. But I think we need to have a serious discussion about whether or not this board even wants to, you know, uh, look at what it takes to do that. But something that's been on my mind uh mm -hmm. over this last year i think that's a good idea i agree and i think like i said there are people like i don't know if you know sarah henshaw she she works with some municipalities as well like that you know have consulting businesses that would you know potentially do that kind of thing on an as needed basis right and um or you could hire someone that maybe the other towns are interested in collaborating and sharing <laughs> the position yeah, uh, I think there's another town looking at that, isn't there, Sarah? Uh, Waitsfield, maybe is that? Yeah, there's it, it periodically goes around. It's yeah, all about putting the stuff out, you know, RFPing it, seeing what comes in. Yeah, and picking the best option. Yeah. Okay. So that's on our um, wish. Our, our uh, goals list is to consider hiring a grant manager to help us with writing grants and managing the grants. Because I'm telling you, it is a lot of work. Even that twenty-eight thousand dollar grant. I mean, literally hours of just, you know, writing reports back and forth, having to, you know, make sure all the dots or I's were dotted and T's were crossed because these 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 federal grants are laborious. It's and it's not even just that. Like once we have the grants, that's a piece of it. In my mind, it's exploring what's out there. It's it's the whole it's the whole grant process mm -hmm. um, how many things are out there that we miss on and I think we get I think we catch the big ones um for the most part because folks come to us with with information on those but um yeah anyway okay. don't need to how did it here. go speaking of things did you hear anything back from your preliminary um I haven't heard anything back I we I I did the uh congressional budget Blah blah blah. Yeah, through, through Bernie Sanders' office. Um, I answered all the questions. Did you get a copy of that, Sarah? Did they email you a copy? 
Okay, I, then I should I, I apologize because I should have brought it here and had you scan it to everybody. So I'll have you scan, I'll, I'll come down and bring that. You can see all the questions, all the answers. So I think the benefit of doing that is one, we're on the radar, yep. you know, even though I didn't have necessarily the answers to all the questions, I fudged my way through. Now we know what the questions are. Yeah. So going okay. forward for next, and then year, they say they would invite you to potentially apply or something. Basically, it was yeah, basically it was saying that we'll, they'll get in touch with us if they feel like okay, gotcha. we we warrant some of yeah. that action. Okay. Um. Okay. So we have personal policy review. Um. You know, I wonder too, I'm thinking about this because I'm thinking about our HR department at work, right? And they're actually going through sort of their, their whole policy manual and employee manual. I'm wondering if there is an opportunity, if we have someone in town who happens to be an HR specialist who would be willing to maybe help us look at some of this stuff as, as a volunteer. I don't know. Because, I mean, we're all just sort of coming at this with looking at what was done historically and then deciding to make some changes. Yeah. Talk about the personnel policy. Yeah. Do you guys want me to uh, remind you what you have asked? Yes. Wait, uh, remind us what? What you've asked in the past. But also about the other goals. That yeah, the goals. Yeah. Okay. So um, on April 4th of 2023, um, We've got an AI assistant. What? Um, here are your goals. Update the personnel policy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Investigate the creation of a cannabis control board. And in fact, you did. You are the yeah. cannabis control board. Study the needs, costs of creating a municipal water system for the village. Continue to allocate ARPA money. You did that. Dissolve Welch Park. You're doing that. Continue renovation plans for town hall in the process. Plan how to re rehab, rebuild the town shed. Pass an updated legal speed ordinance and address the state of the bridge at Wood and Shady Railroad. That's last year. Ah, uh, yeah, the bridge. So the bridge, we never got to that. What, what was the last? The bridge on yeah. Shady Railroad and Wood. You know, there's funding for bridges right now. So I just read an article that beyond the, sorry, beyond the Sanders, um, yeah. all of our local, um, the federal, it's $881 million. And there was an article about Pete Buttigieg talking mm -hmm. about that it's going to be available for all sorts of things. And I think something went to Morecambe, as a matter of fact, for a bridge. Let's put the bridge on our list again for this year. There, there's a bunch of money that uh, the Agency of Transportation through the district has available. I don't know what Eric Eric was going to. Uh, Agency of Transportation. Yeah, yeah, the Vermont Agency of Transportation. Yeah. Basically, out of uh, District Six up here, uh, which is Michelle Redmond. Is yeah. The tech and, Should I reach out to her? I just reached out to her, not the other. <laughs> no, I talked to her since you talked to her. Okay, yeah. Have they done anything there? Did they? Yeah, not yet. Okay. No, the only thing she had to offer was the uh, hydraulic studies. Hydraulic studies? For the culverts <clears throat> that we need uh, uh, Lower Sunny Brook Road, uh, Ordo Road. Uh, Norton Road, Zadon Road. And Are these FEMA related? Sure. Huh? Are these FEMA funding related or totally yes. different? Okay. Well, there's there's Lower Barnett or Lower uh, Sunny Brook and um, the one on East Hill. We can't do anything until we get them. As far as putting it up, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now we have four things on our wish list. What else? Yes, Peter. So I hate to think, but I keep bringing this up every year. I think I've been bringing it up for at least 15 years. But future of the old fire station, if we're going to do some kind of renovation to the town hall, 
that's the perfect time to tear that building down or restore it to some different purpose if that's what we want to do. But uh, I think we painted three sides of the building. We need to paint the roof. We need to paint the other side if we're going to keep it. You know, we just need to revisit that whole issue with that building. And the other thing is, uh, look at the future of our town garage. Every year we put those things off, they don't get any better. True. Yes, Randy. We need to revisit and resolve our IT issues, mm -hmm. email, yeah. server, that kind of stuff. I know we've we've put stuff in the budget for this coming year. Um, we don't want to wait too long before we start that process. <laughs> yes, Cheryl. <laughs> so with our Nimrit program, we've never been online or in the cloud, and they've been suggesting that we go into the cloud to do this. And I found out, and because if they're going to be renovating the building, there's no way that we're going to be able to do some of the stuff that I need to do. Yeah. For it. Um, and I found out that to convert to the cloud would be a $500 fee. Okay. And then $100, uh, I mean, $10 per person that need that accesses it outside of the building or whatever to be okay. on the cloud. And then in that conversation, they said to me, were we on Microsoft 365, which would address our email issues and our file sharing issues and absolutely everything else. And then the guy and I said, I said, well, how does that affect our server? He said, you don't need one. Right. So then that goes away completely. But I want to move to the our numeric programs to, to the cloud file okay. yeah, to do that. So that should be our probably our first thing on on our to do list, which we already actually have on our other um, top of the list. Top of the list of other business. Yeah. Um, because you're right. If we're going to be doing moving and people are going to be working remotely or in trailer or something like that, we have we have um, right now we have room in the computer maintenance budget to where if we wanted to do at least the numeric piece of it right now, we okay. could. But it also would includes camera. And everything that they need as well. Hmm. I, I just want to add to this because the last um, function we went to Wooden Emmerich, they're working on a thing called .NET, which I'm almost sure is probably due to the cloud. And I think by the by the end of or fall, mm -hmm. they it should be up and running. Okay, but do you have to in order for them? I don't understand necessarily moving to converting to the cloud. Can we still have a server? And you can, you can you can we can still convert to the cloud. Cloud while we have for a server, for that, yeah, for that particular software. So okay, the yeah. server just won't service that yeah. function for that. That's okay, all. yeah, and it won't for Excel and file sharing. And they they yeah. upload my understanding that they can upload they keep history historical documents for four to five years, and then everything after that is archived. Mm -hmm. Even because we have stuff on our we have stuff in our computers right now, but probably from the 2010, 12, 13 yeah. emails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's time. Okay, so now that's seven things on our to-do list, of which a few of them are going to be things that we don't actually get done, like the future of the town garage, but we can start exploring it. Yes, Sarah? At your last meeting, you reminded me to tell you that the trash situation at the bottom of Shady Hill Road wanted like an ordinance or to talk about that. Nicole, do you have no raise the question about the sign, the yeah. litter? Okay, yeah. Do you said add that to our goal. Okay. So don't litter sign. That we can do probably. I think you're gonna need an ordinance to back that up. Oh, uh, okay. You can you can put up a sign that says don't litter, but you can't say X number of fines. Okay. You can enforce it. And also, we have to do something about our speed ordinance because if roads are on, um, they 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 cannot be justified in court because when the when the sheriff's ticket somebody. So especially at the, the because but they're not the signs aren't properly put placed. The, the signs aren't properly placed. The ordinance doesn't contain certain roads in town and, and other roads, and it's it's a mess and it needs reworking. And we last year we did a speed study with Central Mont Regional Planning Commission. I don't know if you know you remember that we got some results. Um, and there's it, you can only there's a rule for adjusting the speed so much over the slowest the fastest person, right? So. Um, 
I think the speeds are okay. It's just that we have to get the roads down and the and the sign the signage the correct spacing so that we can so it's defensible because right now it's working. Right. Was there any? Um, I can't remember. Was there a rule that this the speed limit had to be the same everywhere in town? No. There wasn't that. No. Brook Road has a special speed limit, thirty miles an hour versus. 35 miles an hour on center road and I forget why that is for that but that's not the problem the problem is the missing roads and, and the signs and, the, and where there's space space on shady road is all wrong okay so I guess my question is I mean I guess we can talk about this when we put it on the agenda for discussion but um who knows the answer to this like, is this something that you work with the state on? I think we're for the Central Mont Regional Planning Commission. We've already worked with them on this. And there on should this be model, like the LPT, we can get model C. We, I don't think it's going to be that hard to update. Okay. We just have to go through the ordinance warning. And then we have to buy the signs, which aren't in the budget. That's why we That's why we did that study, though. Right. Was because we were behind in the, in the Right. Right. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but, but they're not that expensive. Just, well, they're probably couple hundred dollars each. Just to be the devil's advocate, you know, I, I don't know if I'd want to put a lot of money in it because I don't know if you can hire anybody to enforce it anyways. We, there's two bills in there right now for the Washington County Sheriff's Department. 200 bucks? Huh? 200 bucks? No, there's, well, I think it's almost 700, isn't it? There's two. I, th I, I can't, I know 200, I saw. Yeah, so there's two of them in there, and if they can't enforce them, then why are we paying them? Well, who knows? I mean, someone could die in a car accident, right? And then if we said we didn't have our... No, that could come to court. Yeah, I'd rather have it done right so that when okay. we do have a constable, it's ready. On the oh, she's, she's, she's getting ready to hire a constable. Ready to rock. All right, so we have a lot of things on our on our um on our list, and we can keep adding, and we can triage them. Um, I think the triaging currently is the IT issue is number one. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, probably personnel policy. We want to have that in the next couple of weeks that we start to work on it. So basically, we will take pieces of it. Right. That is, I feel like we've done we made this. it three quarters of the way. Yeah, last we have to finish it. And when we when we hit the difficult stuff, it yeah. stopped. Right. So let's put that on as number two. And. Ongoing is things like town hall renovation. That's just gonna that's just going on right now and it's gonna continue to go on. Um the bridge is gonna be a lot more work, but I think it's something that we do want to if there's funding available now, that's like when we do it, right? So Maybe that's three. Then let's make that number three, yeah. Um what do we want to do to the bridge? Just well, I think it needs deck? I think it needs to be repaired. Yeah. The deck. Yeah. The deck means the flat part, right? What about the uh, grant writing person? Yeah, the grant writing person. Yeah. Let's put the litter sign up before the grant writing person, though, because that might be something we can actually accomplish, and then people feel like when they're communicating with the town and asking that things get done. We'll make that number. Do you ever hear of Steve Hillary Four. Bridge? Number three is bridge, but we'll get the you'll probably get the litter done. Yeah, let's let's do three for litter, four for bridge, five for um grant. Uh yeah, uh hiring grant manager. We have our agenda set for the next 26 weeks. <laughs> Five years. What's uh did did you ever get is the sign over in Culver Hill about the steep? Has that ever been put up? We need the second sign. It was the first one was put up, but it was put up too far away. It just shows like the new one. The, new one. the one I the one I the one I sent a picture to you. Oh no, that has not been put up yet. It's over there. Oh good. Yeah, let's put that as a yeah. We had we had another accident with the FedEx man. He went diving down into the culvert. Again? And, no, that was the that happened this winter. Though. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Slow down. yeah. Believe me. <laughs> Uh, it's challenging and they blew out our mailbox again um okay and then so that's uh so then we sort of have these ongoing ones like future of town garage future of old fire station um and the speed ordinance speed ordinance should go next let's 
you mean by that? I don't know. We had after grants. Yeah, after yeah, grants. Was trying to grant before the future of the buildings. Yeah, before the future of the buildings. So we could have this little like ongoing goals, future of town garage, future of old fire station, town hall renovation. Oh, let's put Nimrick on the cloud. That's a goal. Isn't that part of the oh, IT? That's part of the IT, yeah. That was number one. Yeah, okay, so yeah, put that in as like 1A, Nimrick, Can convert I to cloud. Have a question? Yes. It sounded like this was something that they could pull the trigger on for six hundred dollars and we could have it done tomorrow or the next yeah, day. I think, or yeah, yeah, I think there's a couple there's like a couple weeks that they need notice for and stuff. But like should that. we Yeah, I, I'm not against authorizing yeah. that. I do we even need to I mean, is that something that the select board should vote on? I don't think we if need they to. have it in their budget. Yeah. Okay. I would say just do it. Yeah. yeah. That's and cool. The, they suggested working with um Dominion. For doing our Microsoft 365 and our email, oh, they said if we wanted to do that, that would be one of our. Um, so we would be doing that's under other business considering RFPs. So we would do an RP, and if Dominion submitted, we would review them as a bid. They work with a lot of towns. Well. Yes, that's they they just work closely with memory. Oh, okay, that's good. So, no. Um. Okay, so that's a lot of goals, folks. Wouldn't the lots uh, of goals? Wouldn't the uh, town garage? which we're not going to yeah. do anything unless we get a grant right. and grants are available. Wouldn't that kind of go in at the same time of getting the new grant writer? Um, well, we get a grant writer and then that grant writer would either help town mm -hmm. other right. people or, or look up those grants. So yeah, yeah. get the grant yeah. writer, she'll fund, she or he will fund grants. I mean, I think that the reality is for something like you're not, you're never going to find a grant that does everything, right? I mean, you're going to have to, the reality is that all these things cost money. And the question is, how can we make it the least possible amount of money for the town? Right. Because it's still going to cost the town a lot of money. Right. Yeah, like the be, which is yeah. my my goal. Yeah. Uh, joining the select board and the okay. select board goals is it's find as much money. money okay. That's not taxpayers. Yeah. For uh, everything. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that sort of is ongoing. Um, and I, you know, and I don't know. I mean, if we did, you know, you're not. We're not going to hire a full time grant manager. No, like you said, part time. Somebody who can right. write the grants, it's like writing right. a proposal or an RFP, or. And then maybe someone who's retired, who wants to do that. Well, that's the thing. Kind of like setting your own schedule. I think should we ask in support form. I I think just you know just. I think, Putting that on the VLCT website, putting it out on the business registry, putting this out on the, the town clerk website, front porch forum. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. It's a great idea. I guess, I mean, I guess it I, you depends know, Randy's... on if they're a volunteer or if they're a staff member. Well, let's look and I'm thinking more long term yeah. than just somebody that's got a few hours that can help with a project. I'm thinking about every time we turn around there's something that has to be done that gets plopped on the treasurer that gets plopped on the clerk that gets you know who already have jobs to do that take their time up and we just keep filling their plate right. and things fall off the plate sure. um yeah. well we hope they don't fall it's, but, it's bound to happen. Yeah, but I mean, for example, in this emergency watershed program, I'm sorry to talk to you, Chair, but I do mind that bit. Please. But he, but, but he just said on his way out, I'll, I'll send you all this information about, you know, the um, about the reimbursement and how that's going to work. It's a perfect example. It's a grant, the emergency watershed program. Now we've got it, like, you know, did, are you going to talk to Cheryl about that? Cheryl's got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Who's going to get from all the reimbursement stuff in the emergency watershed program? It's not going to be cut and dry. Right. Uh, you know, that's a perfect example of something like that should be made. Yeah. And I guess for me, for me, if we can find somebody local who's willing to help out until we can find somebody who does the position. And also, let's figure out what, you know, let's just start making a list of grants that are available for things for the town so that we know what we even yeah. want to go for. You know, like maybe the thousand dollar grant is, is right. not as important to spend time on as the. Right. So I do have a list um, that um, I compiled along with help from um, BIA for the town hall, for example, and a lot of those grants sort of overlap with other things, right? They're big grants, right? right. 
And so Sandy, um, I, I sent it over to Sandy a couple weeks ago and she got back to me and she said that she was going to, uh, she, Sally Cavanaugh um, was going to help her um, uh, go through some of this. It's just volunteers right. that they would go and look for some of the, so the things that like you need to keep track of are like, what are the deadlines? Some of them are rolling. Some of them have, you know, spring deadlines. Some of them are have a deadline of next week, but we don't even know what we're doing. So we're not going to apply for that, but it'll be open next year, right. you know? And so um, that's the, um, Sandy's going to start looking at some of the ones that, you know, we could potentially apply for now. Like, for example, we know whether or not this, you know, whether or not we're going to do a full renovation, that something needs to be done about the elevator, right? So we can apply for that funding, right? But what we don't want to do is apply for funding that says you have to spend it by the end of 2026, because that might not be possible. We might not get a contractor to get this done by the end of 2026. Mm -hmm. So those are the those are all the things that someone needs to be in charge of and keeping an eye out on. And, you know, the spreadsheet has the dates that they're due and all that, but it's it still takes someone who, you know, mm -hmm. isn't probably me because I'm working full time and I can't. Yeah. take on one more giant thing um so grant manager would be great for that very good so okay that's nine things on our list what? yeah it it network personnel ongoing town hall litter bridge grant writing speed words future of building well, future of buildings, I have future of town garage and oh. future of old fire station, right. but that could be lumped into one to okay. make it eight. Okay. Um, all righty. I think it's a good list. Anyone want to add to it? Something that we can actually accomplish? <laughs> I just, can I no, we're going to accomplish a lot. Uh, while we're just, before I forget, um, all our B projects, all our emergency projects have made it past the, our project manager, PDG, oh. Oh, Kelly. And they have sent it on to the next level at FEMA. So I don't know when we're going to see the money. We probably still have to deal with environmental and historical on some of those. But the point is, they're out of that slot. Great. Out of that portal into the next level. So, in terms of dirt tech, are they requiring anything up front? No. No. Are they going to build now? And when do we think that work's going to start? May 1st? Well, they'd like to start May 1st, but uh, as you know, the uh, the uh, posted roads don't come off until May 15th. Uh, yeah. They did divide it up into uh, three sections. Yeah. Three three phases, where they're going to start, the next, and the next. Okay. Uh, so that's, uh, as I said earlier, due to the getting um, the hydraulic studies and a permit to go to okay. that. But and, gonna, basically, it was a good thing. They're going to start. If I'm, it could change, but I, I understood it when we had that meeting with Steve and Eric uh, a week or two ago. Um, they're going to start like over on that section on the section of Wood Road, AC Road, over here. Oh, okay. And I guess you know we have that sort of looming concern about <laughs> how to pay them. If we're not getting, if we haven't gotten reimbursed from FEMA and, um, you know, just I'm thinking about the community bank grant that's going to become due in August, like all this is going to happen really soon. And before we know it, we're going to have bills coming in. Um, and so I feel like, Cheryl, you're probably going to need our kind of support in directing you about how we're going to pay these bills if yes. if we don't have any FEMA money yet to pay. Um, we still have our, uh, what do you call it, our uh, line of credit. Line of credit. Okay. Thank you. Well, a million four. But that's the, but it still expires in a year. I mean, it expires in August. Right. So we have to pay it off or renew it. So that's the kind of thing that we need to we need to have. Some Hopefully, we'll get some money before then. But you don't. I mean, I have no idea. We absolutely have to explore what we're going to do before yeah. we get there. I think so too. Has, um, has somebody worked with their tech? I don't know. 
what kind of billing they need to be doing or sending bills in because so we don't end up with the FEMA and the ASCO kind of thing, you know, like I think Steve is uh... like. That shovel of dirt, <laughs> where that come from? Yeah, we had talked. <laughs> we we had talked about having a sample invoice for it, them. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Laid out so that their invoicing followed that sample, which was identified everything that FEMA wanted and how exactly how we need to see it. And I know we also had a conversation about there would that there would not be any invoices authorized for payment until that was all taken care of. Um, Sarah, uh, could you do us a favor? I think Marshfield does this, I think on their agendas. They always have, you know how you have like the Zoom instructions down here, it's the same. If you could have maybe um, also like just sort of ongoing, like what our goals are so that we're, we're always remembering this, like, just like a you know, just a little list, um, like a paragraph list of our, our goals. I think it's just helpful for us to keep seeing them and then be like, oh yeah, let's have this be on our agenda for next um next time. She could copy and paste. Yeah. Every week. Yeah. I mean, like she copies she and pastes it. Template. It's the same template. She would sure. just have it. Sure. And then it's then it's helpful, I think. This does do people like that idea? Mm -hmm. It doesn't add too much more work for you, does it? No. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. It might make our agenda page. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry, I've got to go, everybody. All righty, thanks. Bye bye. Have a good evening. I'll look yeah. forward to knowing when our select board meeting is. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, bye -bye. so I think in the interest of time, we can move on from our goals. And if we think of something that's, you know, Oh gosh, we really need to have this on our goal. We can add it. And that's will be helpful because we can add it down on the bottom. A, a revolving goal line. Um, and then we can have a check, we check it off when we've actually met it, and then we can feel good about it. Okay. Considering so other business, considering issues re, uh, issuing requests for proposals for town IT contractors and contractors, no action. Um, because that wasn't on the agenda. Or, you, said, you said put it on the agenda for next week. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, does anyone know how to make an RFP for an IT? You do? Okay. I, I don't. I'll just borrow from other towns. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll talk about that next week. I think that's a great idea and we'll get on that. Um, accepting Nicole uh, D'Agostino's resignation from the Planning Commission and posting a notice of vacancy action likely. <laughs> Um, so unfortunately, Nicole has a lot on her plate with work and family and T-ball. So she is resigning and there is a open slot. And so Sarah, you didn't post anything yet on that, did you? I on, did. on the front porch farm? Any interest? Yeah. No. Okay. I actually tried to put somebody's arm who lives oh. in the village and I thought I had them, but okay. Is there a requirement that we have X number of people on the planning commission? Or it's just it becomes a vacancy, you know. It becomes a vacancy because it's, you know, Sandy would like to yeah. the planning commission to work with Bill. Okay. If you know anybody who wants to join the planning commission, yeah. I wonder if um <laughs> what if Sandy should maybe put out a I mean to say like this is what the planning commission is. It's such a great yeah. Right. fun yeah. club, the planning commission club. <laughs> So you guys are accepting the full resignation? Yes. Yeah. And so do we make a motion? Um, well, you don't need to say thanks. For your yeah, time. thank you, Nicole, for your time. I thanked her at work the other day. She works at Capstone. Oh, um, okay, so considering moving the regularly scheduled May 7th select board meeting to a different date and time to accommodate the WCU USD budget revote in town hall that same day, action likely. Tell us about that, Sarah. Well, the ballots are ready. Don't ask them tonight. Um, okay. We've are we they arrived very quickly. So we are. Wait, the, have they come up with a new budget number? Yes, they're on the ballot downstairs. Okay. It's all posted downstairs. I do see my little prom board right here, but okay. you can go downstairs and read it. Um, anyway, the point is that the voting um, is going to take place this week. 
um, clerk's office because the, the the clerk from the school district kind of screwed it up, but that's okay. So it's going to be the clerk's office from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesday, which means I will get people here voting. You're going to get a lot of people. I really got a lot of interest. I mean, I've already, these the ballots are not being mailed to everybody as they were originally. So it's all by request. Yeah. And I've already gotten a lot of requests. It's a lot of work on our end. Yes. And um, the the point is that that meeting, I won't I won't be able to be here. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but you're also on the VCA, so somebody's gonna have to stick around. Well, let's just reschedule it. Well, no, wait a minute. You can you can keep it. It's just that you, because you're gonna have to stick around and count ballots, the number of ballots. That's all you have to do. Not votes, just ballots. So I guess you can keep you can hold the meeting. I just can't be here. Which means somebody else takes notes and minutes. Yeah, I can't do that. Normally it's the seventh and the twenty first. But then we're also here to help you count ballots. After the polls close at seven p.m., it won't take it won't take long. You don't have to do write-ins. You don't. All you have to do is just count the number of ballots and send them off with is it Chris and Janet at seven p.m. After the polls close, so and you just can't be here for the for taking the notes. No, so the let's just is, have the meeting. But should we do the meeting a little bit later so that we're here at seven? So we go six to seven versus five and to well, seven. we often go to seven. Okay, this is an early day. Right. Where are we it's almost seven now. Exactly. All right, where's where's the the meeting going to be here. And then where's the voting going to be? Oh, downstairs. the meeting's going to have to be. Oh, the voting's going to be downstairs. So that's, that's actually the benefit of this. I didn't realize that when I stepped at the agenda, it was the voting was supposed to be up here, but the school district clerk screwed up and she warned it as being in the town clerk's office, which is downstairs. The problem is we vote the issue. It's like a logistic issue. If we get a flood of people who need to vote, even yeah. though it's a yes or no, uh, I have a feeling they're going to be holding boots up here. So, and I'm not speaking very clearly. I'm sorry. I understand what you're saying. She warned it to be downstairs, which right. is the town clerk's office. This right. is not technically the town clerk's right. office. Absolutely. Um, but if we get if you get twenty people, they're going to need to vote someplace. They're going to need to vote someplace and and have a private. And I, spot. I'm going to set up voting booths up here, so people can just come up here, vote, come downstairs, and put their ballot. Check yeah. out. Let's do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't that okay? Because yeah, that's okay. It, it's a public meeting anyway. They can, right. So we'll just put them polling booths yeah. there. So that way we don't have to have three times that we come. Just one line office. up, Sarah. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll just put some. All right, so let's keep the meeting. You guys are okay with that. Have yeah. a line out the door down the street. <laughs> Is someone willing to take notes on the seventh I instead will, of Sarah? I'll do my best, and also we will we'll record it. So yeah, okay. So, um, yeah. but it's nice that Sarah doesn't have to go back and watch the whole meeting. So right. if you can do, no, we can do preliminary. I've taken notes while notes. while in a meeting, and it's not hard. Okay. All right, so let's just keep it as May seventh. We don't do we need to make a motion? No. no. Okay. Um, all right. Orders are here um, to be signed. Is there any correspondence? Yeah, so I did get an email today from Jer Jeremy Goff. Jeremy Goff, um, who uh, felt that our response, which was in the minutes, was not sufficient to um, his his situation with the GPS location of dumping the um, material at the GPS location that he was given, which happened to be your property. And he, um, if you want, I can just read that correspondence. And I did respond to him and I can read you about what I responded. Wasn't this last week that that happened? No, it was like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Yeah, but he literally sent me the email today, wasn't it, Sarah? Yeah, he wrote me earlier this week and asked, and I sent him the minute, or maybe it was last week, I forget. He, he, sent, the, he sent the minutes, and uh, I sent him the minutes and explained, I think I just sent him the minutes. Yeah, so... Yeah, you sent him the minutes and you said attached are the minutes from the March 19th meeting. The select board didn't get recorded due to a technical glitch, so I can't send you that. But the minutes are the permanent record anyway. Let me know if you want to speak to the board on Tuesday. I've CC'd the chair here since she's the one who decides on the agenda. That was on April 9th. On April 12th or 15th today yeah. at 1135. 
He wrote, I have read this item in the minutes and see a considerable lack of transparency. The minutes only reflect Vic's statements and include no mention of the actual complaint. Furthermore, Vic's remarks to being the Middlesex Road Commissioner took place when I attempted to show him the GPS location I was sent along with the seven other trucks that showed up to the same location, all given to Hutchins by the road foreman. All eight trucks, including mine, were allowed to dump at that location when the job site foreman intervened. When Vic's son was never present during this altercation, so why he was given any room to speak is questionable. I don't have the time or energy to continue to, I'm not sure what he means by this, to chance this, but I will say if Vic crosses me again in person or by his nonsense complaints to my employers or contractors against me, or if he approaches me in any matter pertaining to this situation, I will take full legal litigation against the town of Middlesex. I do not bring this complaint to the town's attention because Vic's actions. I brought this to the town's attention. Road commissioner approached me in a violent and threatening manner, representing himself as the road commissioner, however, refusing to give his name. It was his nonsense complaints after the fact that provided his name. As mentioned last year over the phone, this was a situation that needed more serious attention than it was given. I don't know the whereabouts on the agreement between the road foreman and the folks I was working for, but the information was given to all by GPS mapping and additional information was that location was being used by the town as a staging area where materials and the town's excavator was being parked. The town road commissioner claimed he knew of no work being done or flood damage that occurred on McCullough Hill and flat refused to look at the information I was trying to share with him. I was being reasonable and respectful despite his actions and behavior. Your road commissioner identified himself as such and refused to provide his name or relationship to said location. That's all I have to say about this matter aside from stating that I find this situation and the town's handling of this situation disgraceful disrespectful, unprofessional, and with complete disregard to respectfully handling serious matters brought to light involving town officials' public misconduct. And then in all caps, this town as a whole owes a professional acceptance of responsibility and a public apology for said misconduct. Vic is no victim here. He's the aggressor that could have taken a moment to read a manifest, which included a GPS location. That's the end of that email. I responded, thanks, Jeremy. For your reference, I believe I did read aloud the letter from you to the full board. Didn't I? Yeah. Although that fact might not have made it into the minutes. At this point, with no one but the two of you there as witnesses and hearing conflicting information, as chair, I reminded everyone that while we are private citizens, we also represent the board, even when we don't have our board hats on or our public official hats on. I'm sorry that you had this negative experience and I hope that your future interactions with our town are positive ones. So that was my response and I'm reading his correspondence into the record. Duly noted. Duly noted. Are there any questions or comments? That up. That's it. Yeah, I, I do. But you do have some comments? Yeah. Okay, go right ahead, Vic. Uh, in other words, you're you're accepting his com comments. No. No, I did not say that. You read it in his minutes. I didn't take it that way. I did not. I said I'm sorry that you had this experience and I hope your other experiences. I did not put any blame on anyone. But his experience, his, 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 what he's saying isn't true. What's he talking about? GPS. I, I never saw any GPS. I never got that close to it. There, there's conflicting there's information. Conflicting information. Right. There's conflicting information in, in his email here from even to his email prior. I don't feel like this is an issue that we need to belabor. Yeah. I think we, it was nine months ago. I, no one was there except the two of you. And I just, you know, what can we do? I think we've right, got to do. We've, we've read the communications into the record. Mm -hmm. 
mean, we've already taken our stance. And and he has a perceived um on port, he has a perceived uh slight or yeah it, it experience that was not positive, and I hope that that doesn't happen again. That's all I'm saying. I don't want anyone to have a bad experience talking with anyone or being in our town or feeling unwelcome in our town. I agree. Okay, any other discussion of that correspondence? Okay. Um, any other matter that may come before the board? Yes, I sorry. just want to mention that we are going to have our inaugural meeting of the Middlesex Road Commission, whatever we want to call ourselves, mud committee. tomorrow night. The Mud Road the Committee? The Mud Road Committee. <laughs> or just Dirt Road or, or whatever, I guess we decide to name ourselves. Yeah, we should go with just Wood Committee as a yeah. title because that could entail bridges and possibly even the town shed since I that disagree direct, wholeheartedly. That... I really want us to focus on the problem of the roads that we all travel together and not go off in a million different directions. But a lot of a lot of the a lot of the federal grants cover everything that has to do with the roads and bridges, but culverts. You, but they drainage. don't cover everything as a whole. You have to individually ask for a bridge and individually ask for this many miles of road and individually ask for that's all a grant fund. I think that for the most part, people's concerns are getting out of their homes safely to work in a normal time frame and not getting stuck and feeling safe on their roads. I agree. We will all, obviously, the 15 of us that are there will will decide <laughs> determine whether that's the route we're going I'd or like we want to do many others. One source of funding to that. But I think it's kind of it's I think it's dangerous to go beyond the roadways, getting to work, having medical vehicles being able to access, and figuring out whether we're doing road pavement, I mean dirt pavement, and we'll let you guys duke that out. Yes. Jess, I know that you're gonna be talking to the, the guys and you and I know I mentioned to Eric if they grade nitro. Washing out again, so I have to be very careful with the grader. Um, on one side of it, it's kind of washed out, and then on the beginning, it's kind of washed out. So when you drive, it's like one lane, mm. and I just don't want the grader up. I'm not even sure it's wide enough for the grader in It might not be. So where is but if they do, it's just, as you go around the bend past the sand pit, like coming up towards where we are at the end, it's that road that washed out last year, and they kind of filled it in. But well, it's it's like since that last storm, it's dense so back end. I'm sure they're by Sid, Sid's point. Yeah. Uh, right in front of Sid, yeah. So I just don't want the grader all of a sudden, kind of, you know, going on end. And then the second thing is, I know that Steve and I have studied a lot on grants, and the only thing I do know is a lot of your grants, you have to have other stuff included or you don't qualify. Well, and we're going to have to look at all of that. Yeah, yeah gonna, you'll cross that bridge when you get to it. Exactly. You're, you're, great. you're not going to be writing a grant. We'll cross the bridge when we get to it and determine whether we need to You'll cross that bridge when you get to it. Or not fix the bridge. <laughs> 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 okay, so there's um, orders to sign. There's what do we need to the sign? minute to sign. Yes, Vic. Okay, um, I noticed in these orders, yes. and uh, before Cheryl left, I was going to ask, but I didn't. Um, and it may not make any difference. I see in there that the uh, Carroll Concrete has uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars for blocks, and I believe those blocks are part of FEMA. So I don't oh. know if we're paying for them. I don't think we. Looks like we paid for them to me. I could be wrong, but they should be part of FEMA. So when you say Carroll Con uh, Concrete, are they subcontracted by someone that did? What happened? What happened? If I can explain it, yeah, is uh, they got them. Uh, they, uh, I believe it was uh, all seasons. Yeah, excavating, and because uh, we talked about it when Eric and I went down there, and um, they got uh, there was some um, blocks that were taken, and. Uh, the person that should have been accounting for him at Carroll wasn't there, was on vacation or something. And then they came back and they found out about it. And then they discovered it in like December or January. They called me up and asked me. We went to Steve. And so they finally sent the bill in. And But that all should be to FEMA for this work that... Uh, We've already submitted. Well, 
No, I don't think we submitted that 750, but I think I think they were going to. Steve and uh, uh, Steve and uh, all seasons were going to uh, figure that out. How they were going to. Uh, I guess my question is: Did we already submit to FEMA that project? No, there's still it's still only. Oh, okay. So, so it just needs to be reclassed and tracked as FEMA related. Correct. Costs. Thank you for saying that. Okay. That's exactly what it's. But that's not what it is right now. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. You can right. take a look at it. You're so right. Cheryl's not here right now, but um, why don't we put a post it on it or something like that? Okay. Um, Sarah, do you have a post it that we could borrow just to say that we think this is related to? Um, should I have her um, get in touch with you, Dick? Like, because you, you will have to sign it to some project, right? Right. Right. While you're going to talk about that, did you notice that our oldest living relative, age of president, and elder had died? Oh, no, she did. She died. One. Oh, not bad. Wow. So no longer the long, oldest resident. Nope. I don't know who is now. All right, this is a gross flag that needs to go. Sorry, flag. I feel it someday. <laughs> All right, so is there anything else that is coming before the board? Hearing nothing, this meeting is adjourned at 6.37. 37.